everybody. Welcome to a brief video update on what's new in Aqua Data Studio version 22. So I have a few slides that summarizes uh, some of the major highlights and then look for some updates here on the, the user community sites. Um, so here is the home page where you'll see this updated and here's the reoccurring webcast. So the next one and the next few will cover what's new and a little more extended version and then some of the links will be updated as well so we're adding a database platform single store and then updated a couple of database versions that we'll go over in the in the slideshow and then we'll dive into the live product uh, demonstration so here's a summary of what you'll see and uh, areas we'll cover in this uh, updated video okay um so here is the look and feel of the support pages for version 22 and then here's a summary of what's new that we'll cover in this video um, you can download the latest version uh, for in different ways if you're, you're downloading for the first time you have the aquafold.com site for existing customers use the portals link and you don't have to fill in your customer information all right so the the what's new link will be updated from the the aquafold.com homepage. i mentioned we added single store which used to be called memsql so that's a new platform now added to the 40 plus database vendors that, that Aqua supports. Postgres version 13.1 and Teradata version 17.5 are the latest versions now supported. Um, and then we updated drivers as well. So further on the list, you can see um, some of the updated drivers. One of the benefits of Aqua is the bundled JDBC drivers. So it's very easy to connect to, to many different platforms. Um, in terms of the object tree, uh, we've added sort procedures for Amazon Redshift and Snowflake. Um, and then we've also added uh, the DBA tools for Snowflake. So a lot of momentum with Snowflake, and uh, you'll see that in this, this demonstration. Um, Single Store also has the DBA features as well. So two new DBA drill downs for the, the DBA tools menu. Um, for the developer user, uh, there's now unit testing within Aqua Data Studio. So the, the first platforms are Postgres and, and SQL Server. So we'll, we'll, we'll show some use cases and, and, and unit testing capabilities now um, for, for regression testing and version testing of, of stored procedures or stored code. Um, for the data focus user, the data compare wizard is, is, has been simplified. There's now a, a left and right hand side um, wizard similar to the schema compare wizard or schema synchronized wizard and, and we'll, we'll introduce that as well so we had the results compare but now there's a, a more robust data compare wizard with options for synchronizing data and then of course product fixes and, and, and resolutions to any outstanding uh, requests or enhancements so those are documented a little more for a little more detailed, but for this for this presentation, we'll just cover some of those highlights there. Um, so just a quick screenshot, and we'll dive into the live product environment for single store, and um, and that's a you know very high high performance uh, memory database. So um, growing with our user requests, and we we're happy to add it to the Aqua Data Studio database list. Stored prox for Redshift, so that was needed and now we have that in the tree see some examples there and we'll take a look also for snowflake and then the the uh, unit testing for postgres um, some different versions there in postgres and also sql server so these are invoked from the tools menu or the right click uh, way to invoke the tools menu from the aqua data studio navigator tree uh, the data compare wizard found under the the tools compare drill down and then also from the tree where you can multi-select or control click and then invoke the right click data compare or schema compare wizards so now you'll see some new options and we'll look, we'll look closer at this as well um, and then the dba tools menu have, have floated together so we can look at those uh, for single store and snowflake okay so let's take a look here uh, again just under help about latest version we're in june of 2021 here so 22.0 is the latest version and here I've created some different different groupings. So here I have what's next version and I created a bundle of, of some of the demonstration areas for version 22. So if you're new to creating folders, just server group and then register server is where you can make a new connection or 
here's where you see single store now. Okay. All right, so maybe just to use the uh, the list here as an agenda. Um, so single store under register server is now added, and then Postgres, Teradata are up to those versions. Um, under the help online documentation, there's a link that shows all the latest versions as well. So if you ever want to see which dot release of a database platform Aqua supports, uh, that's, that's easy to find in the online documentation. Here, I can launch that for us here, um, uh, supported RDBMS platforms. So this is an easy way to see all the latest dot versions that Aqua supports. Okay, um, so then database objects in the trace. So here I have um, both Redshift and Snowflake. And so if I expand and drill down into databases in Amazon and then the schema drill down, you can see stored procs within the, the navigation tree. So expanding these will expand your object support and then you'll have create, create, alter, drop uh, for stored procedures in Redshift and then also for Snowflake. So similar. Similar capabilities there, where you'll have the create alter for stored procs, um, and then even with the schema scripting, um, schema script right click, schema script generator, you'll see tables views and stored procedures. Um, and, and for Redshift here, for Snowflake, we have pipe stages file formats. Okay. So the server script schema script, those are added in those uh, for store procedures for those platforms. Um, we'll, we'll examine the DBA areas here a little bit further, but there you see single store, snowflake, DBA menus. Um, the unit testing, that's an exciting new area. A lot of development has gone into that. So I have a few tabs here open, but under tools, manage unit tests would be a way to invoke that. And when you drive from the tools menu, you're prompted to to specify what, what your connection is. And so here I have some connections already set up for Postgres and SQL Server, the platforms that we've added the unit testing for. And so I also have some tabs opened up for those as well. Um, but here you simply drill into the database connection where you have your unit testing set up, and then you'd, you'd be able to right click and invoke that as well. So. Here, if I was in my SQL Server environment, I have a, a T-SQL example database, right-click there, Tools, Manage Unit Tests, and that'll invoke the unit testing for that connection. So here I had some of those examples already opened. Um, you have a little icon here in the top, top right, and that would show you your existing tabs in your workspace. And so here, here you can see the, the look and feel of the navigation for SQL Server, similar in Postgres. Um, so you have the ability to create classes, uh, create individual tests, group them in your classes, and then you know test these, see success or failures, um, get status on those, and then you know do an all run or all tests. And so you have these these the abilities to create these different groupings and see a summary of your existing test cases. Here is it in. Um, Microsoft SQL Server. Here are some Postgres examples as well. And so um, look for more platforms to be added and, and you know, helpful functionality here for those of us responsible for you know, working with stored code and then doing regression testing or unit testing. Okay, the DBA tools menu uh, has the similar menus for um, most platforms, but Snowflake now has some, a, a few variations, right? So. When we look at the typical grouping, we have the Instance Manager, Storage, Security, Session Manager. SQL Server has SQL Server Agent. Oracle has a few additional managers as well. And so for Single Store, we have Instance Manager, Storage, Security, Session Manager. And then Snowflake, we have Storage Manager, Security Manager, and then Sharing Manager, Resource Manager. So some of these differences within, um, within the Snowflake environment where you can see quotas and and resources left, um, you can suspend accounts, those type of menus are a little specific to Snowflake. So to invoke these, you can you can just launch these within the, the workspace tabs, uh, but I've also, um, I've also opened those up as floating windows as well to show those unified, right? So, um, so here's a grouping of the Snowflake DBA utilities, right? And so, here you can see uh, your storage manager with databases, tables, and stages, right? 
then the security manager has your users and roles, and then the tabs at the top here for network policy as well. So you can see the navigation tree or individually visit the tabs. Sharing manager, I don't have a lot populated here, but you can see some of these titles, the shares, names, the ability to create um, and then delete. And so um, you can see the scripting features here, full account, reader account. So some of these are a little newer to, to the Snowflake environment and the cloud and hosted, right? Where you're paying for transactions and space versus um, the actual RDBMS. Um, and then here we have the session manager, which of course is, um, I don't have this unified here, the session manager or resource manager, sorry. So that's what we call it here in, in Snowflake. So the warehouses and then resource monitors. And these are, again, some of the areas, credit quota, use credits, remaining credits, um, and then the ability to manage uh, these resources in the Snowflake environment. So you have that uh, similar unification for single store. Um, so here we have those grouped together. So this session manager versus resource manager. And then of course the, the right click ability to, to see the process ID, maybe resolve a bottleneck, terminate a session. Um, and then again, I've, I've unified these as well. So instance manager for single store, variable status, character sets, collations, storage manager, engines, table status, tables, right? And then you can group these or sort by different sizing metrics, uh, security manager, tree users, roles, and groups, right? So the, the core database administration features that we've added for probably over, over 15 now different databases to really extend the functionality of Aqua in these platforms. Okay, and then um, the data compare wizard, um, extends what did exist in the results compare, right? So we had results compare and still do. And so that's more of these ad hoc compares where you can choose the left and right hand side of, of a query results set, right? And so here, you know, this is what we had prior, right? Where here I have a couple of queries and you can see just what's different between those. And so the data compare wizard, you know, gives you a wizard left and right hand side, right? So the schema compare had the left and right hand side now we have the data compare wizard similar. And then of course you can invoke this from the navigation tree as well. So we'll, we'll show that. But here, if you were just starting from the tools menu, browse specifies what's the connection or registered server, and then the table uh, on the left and right hand side, source and target, or the ability to swap those, right? Go in a different direction. And then here compare options, uh, what you're looking to compare or not compare, and then also Delta scripts, which which direction you're migrating and synchronizing the changes, right? So you can, you can populate those manually, but why don't I back up here a little bit to one of my test environments, and then we have this uh, a little more, more set up here. So I had a couple of test tables I was working with. So I had a categories table, categories two table, and that's the, the results set that I just showed on that, that quick compare. And so here, you know, here's again, just queries against these tables, right click, you can script those out very quickly, execute. Here I have two different data sets for these two different tables. So I could choose those on the left and right hand side on the uh, data compare, right? So tools data compare would invoke that where I could choose those, but I can shift click if they're consecutive, control click if they're not consecutive in the tree or in different databases. And then that populates the, the data compare wizard for me, right? So right click, data compare, and now populate, right? So again, you could change that on the fly. Here's the object or table that I'm, that I'm comparing, but you could also compare an ad hoc query result set. So that's similar to the existing compare results. Um, and then the key column and what columns you're comparing, right? And so maybe I'll uncheck this picture column for this compare. So you can do that manually here or just choose a single column compare. Um, we need a key column to anchor the compare and then you know, that's similar to what it currently exists in the results compare. And then here are some options so we can explore these, or maybe for the sake of this video, we'll just execute these as exists with the default unchecked. But if you just wanted to see rows that are different and isolate those, you can. And then here are what direction to create the sync scripts. But here, if I click compare, this will do a side-by-side -side compare. 
And now you can see some of these, you know, where I have modified is blue. Uh, if I had new rows or deleted rows, those would be color coded accordingly. And then here is where you see those values displayed in the lower half, half of the screen, right? So you can choose um, to show them side by side. So there they're showing the side by side difference or in the grid. And then here you can refresh that to, to, to bring back the, the latest compare or go back into the compare if you wanted to change this or rerun this. So you don't have to start from the tools menu from scratch. You can get back into the compare and perhaps alter this. So here, for example, if I said, just show me the rows that are different, it would isolate and just show you those. So if you want a quick diff, nice and easy, quick compare wizard. And then uh, for maybe more complex steps, you have which direction you'd like to make the, the synchronization. And then it would generate those scripts for you. Okay, so once again, this was just a brief overview of what's new. Um, there's more detailed documentation in the release notes, and then look for uh, the latest you know, video updates, the resources drilled down is where we'll post the, the newer updates, both the what's new and then the overview with, with, in, that includes the what's new. And so that next scheduled date, you can always see here on the homepage here where you have the, the posted calendar dates for the reoccurring bi-monthly, twice a month, Aquadata Studio reoccurring webcasts. Okay, thanks everybody for joining the what's new in version 22. Good luck with Aquadata Studio.